What's up everyone? Graham here with Music City Acoustics, and we're talking all about room measurements. Do you know how to take measurements of your room? Or how to analyze those measurements looking at waterfall plots, frequency response graphs, impulse responses, decay times, and more? In this two-part series, we're going to show you step-by-step -step how to take measurements of your room using Room EQ Wizard, a completely free and super powerful software program. And then we're going to show you how to analyze those measurements so that you can build an action plan for improving the sound in your studio. So more than likely, you have just about everything we're going to need to get started. You're going to need your computer, an audio interface with at least two channels, your speakers, cables to hook everything up together, a microphone stand, tape, a tape measure, and then we're going to need a couple of things more specific to taking room measurements. We're going to need a measurement microphone, an SPL meter, and of course, Room EQ Wizard. When it comes to measurement microphones, you don't need to spend a lot of money. We've got this Bear Dynamic MM1. It's a couple hundred dollars, but there's a ton of great options out there for around a hundred bucks. The most important thing is to make sure when you're buying a mic that it comes with a calibration file. It's a file that you should be able to download after you've bought the mic that will tell REW the exact frequency response of your microphone. And then the same thing applies for your SPL meter. You can either get one right on your phone for free, or you can buy a standalone one like this, our Checkmate CM130. We've got links to both microphones and SPL meters down below, so check those out. Now that we know what gear we're gonna need, let's download REW onto the computer and get started. So I'm at roomeqwizard.com, clicked on the Mac OS download. I'll go ahead and get that installed, and we're gonna open it up. So all of the default settings for the installer will work great. And then uh, as soon as we click finish, REW is going to open up. So we've got REW pulled up. It shows you the user manual the first time you open it. And REW is a really comprehensive, powerful tool. And the user manual is very well written and has a ton of great information about acoustics and measurements uh, and the different ways that REW is actually taking those measurements. So if you're curious about any of it, definitely check it out. It's an awesome resource. For now, I'm gonna go ahead and close the manual, and then we will go ahead and get our uh, audio inputs and outputs set up. We're gonna do that under the Preferences tab. So I'm gonna go up here in the top right to this wrench, and that will pull up our preference window. And from here, you can select your interface, uh, your sample rate, the inputs and outputs that you wanna use, and then we'll be able to calibrate our sound card from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my duet for both the input and the output, and then I'm gonna change my sample rate to 48K. Uh, you can use either 44.1 or 48K. Whatever you're working with will be totally fine here. And then I prefer to use the left output and left input for my system. That's just because I think of those as one. Either one works works just fine. We don't need to change anything here in the uh, input or set output channel mapping controls. And that leads us to this sound card calibration. So now we're ready to create a sound card calibration file for your interface. This allows REW to measure, identify, and then remove any potential artifacts or distortion that your interface might be imparting on the measurements otherwise. To calibrate your sound card, you need to plug the output of your interface directly into the input of your interface. So once you have the output of your interface plugged into the input of your interface, we're ready to hit calibrate sound card. Right here, REW is just telling us a little bit more about the loop back that we created and how it's measuring the frequency response. We're gonna hit next through that. So as we'll see right here, it's telling us we want a fairly high level between minus 12 and minus six dBFS. Right here is gonna be the output of your audio interface and right here is gonna be the input. And we wanna make sure that the input is coming in around minus 12 to minus six dB. So let's hit next. And then you should start to see signal pop up. So again, this is the output and here's the input. So mine's looking pretty low. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the output of my interface. This is the same way that you would turn up your speakers if you were listening to something. So I will start adjusting this and we should see this level come up. So once it's showing minus 12 or right around minus 12 to match the output, I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. So we'll hit next one more time and REW is gonna start taking a measurement all on its own. We can see that happening here. So this is the measurement that it's gonna use to create the calibration file for your interface. So if we hide our preferences for a second, you can see the measurement that it took. And it should look something like this, where it's relatively flat. Your interface should not be imparting a lot. This is just a stopgap to make sure that any you know, frequency response changes or variations that your interface does have aren't going to impact your measurements. So 
we'll bring this back up. And the last step in this process is to hit make cow file. You can enter any notes you have. And then you want to make sure you go ahead and save that somewhere so that you can pull that back up anytime you need it. So we'll name this duet cow file. I'm just going to go ahead and save that on my desktop. So REW should have automatically loaded in your calibration file that you'll see right here. If that doesn't happen for any reason, go ahead and hit browse. You can search your computer for it from there. The last step that we need to take before we can start making some noise is to load in our microphone calibration file. Double check what your input settings are here. So Duet USB microphone is mine. And I'm gonna go to the Cal Files tab here, and then I'm gonna find Duet USB microphone. And this is where we wanna load in the calibration file for your microphone. I'm gonna hit browse, and then I already put in that REW folder that I created the calibration files that I got from Bearer Dynamic. So you'll see here, I have two different calibration files. I have a zero degree one and a 90 degree one. And they have to do with the orientation that you're gonna have your mic in when you're taking measurements. I like to take my measurements in the 90 degree position or with my microphone vertical. The reason for this is that you get a flatter frequency response out of the microphone. When you orient it horizontally, you get a buildup of pressure at high frequencies when it's pointed directly at the speaker. If you don't have both calibration files, this isn't a huge deal. It is mostly just a difference that occurs at really high frequencies. And most of what we're looking at in our measurements is gonna be lower in the frequency range. And then the whole reason for this calibration file is that every microphone has its own frequency response. And if we know what it is, REW, just like we did with our interface, can eliminate any interference or variations that the frequency response of your microphone might otherwise impart on your measurements. Now that we have calibration files for both our microphone and our audio interface, we need to calibrate the input level into REW. To do this, I'm gonna open up the SPL tool. This allows us to move the microphone or our speakers and to compensate for the level changes that those might introduce so that we can compare apples to apples, different listening positions or different speaker placements and know that what we're seeing is the change in placement and not just a change in distance from our microphone to our speakers. For all my measurements, I like to use 80 dB C-weighted for my reference level. This makes sure that I have a good signal to noise ratio and that background noise won't be a problem with any of my measurements. So let's jump in and I'll show you how to calibrate our input level. We're ready to start making some noise. I've got my measurement microphone, my SPL meter, and the SPL tool pulled up here in REW. I'm gonna go ahead and click on calibrate here. And that will pull up this dialog box that says choose signal source. I'm using a speaker for these measurements instead of a sub. So I'm gonna go ahead and select speaker cal signal. And then we're gonna hit okay. As soon as you hit okay, REW is gonna start generating a signal. So make sure your interface is turned down before starting this. So take your SPL meter and hold it right next to your measurement microphone. The target here is to get the level on the SPL meter to read 80 dB. So my SPL meter was reading right at 80 dB C, but I wasn't getting any signal from my microphone. So I got this warning here that says the input level is too low. If this happens, just make sure phantom power is turned on or like in my case, that your mic gain isn't turned all the way down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this process one more time. So with my mic gain adjusted, I was able to get a signal coming through there and now everything's ready to go. Now we can go ahead and close out this SPL tool. Anytime that you move your microphone or your speakers, just pull it up and recalibrate things real quick so that every measurement you take has a consistent reference level. We're finally ready to start taking measurements. I'm gonna go up here to the top left corner and hit measure. That brings up the measurement window. There's a lot of options here, so let's walk through everything and then we're gonna be ready to start taking measurements. So the first thing I wanna do is name my measurement. The note section is super useful for putting in any info about the measurement that you're taking. So anything like microphone placement or speaker placement, if it's the first listening position you're testing or the second listening position, so right below notes, we have the range, and that's gonna be the starting and ending frequency for your measurement. I like to have my measurements start typically at 15 hertz, so just below what we can typically hear, and then going up to 20,000 hertz is fine. For the level, I just leave this at minus 12. That's what we calibrated the system at, and everything should be working great there. Up here in settings, we have the length of the sweep that REW is gonna take, and the number of repetitions. I prefer to set this to 512, 
and at least two repetitions. The more accurate that you want your measurements to be, the longer the sweep should be and the more repetitions that you should take so that REW can average those out and provide you with a more accurate result of what's actually going on in your room. For our basic measurements, we don't need to change anything here in timing. Under protection, we'll leave abort if heavy input clipping occurs. The next thing that we need to adjust is the delay setting here. I like to push this up to around six seconds so that when I hit start measurement, that measurement doesn't actually start for six seconds. That gives me time to move away from the microphone or to leave the room so that I'm not interfering at all with the measurements that I'm taking. The last thing that we need to check on is our output and input settings. Your input settings should stay pretty consistent. So your output settings will change depending on whether you're measuring your left speaker or your right speaker or both. I'm gonna start with my left speaker, so we're gonna leave this as it is, but if you click on this, you can change it to your right speaker or your left and right speakers, and then you can take different measurements depending on what you're going for. Our calibration files are already set in our preferences, so we don't need to do anything here, but if you click on it, you can just double check that everything's loaded correctly. Now we're ready to take our first measurement. All we have to do is hit start, and REW will do the rest. So we've got our first measurement pulled up here in REW, and the first thing that we're gonna do is save it to make sure we don't lose anything. To save all the measurements in your REW window, hit save all. You can add any notes that you want, and then you can name it and choose where it's gonna be saved. Now that you've got your measurements saved, you'll be able to pull them up anytime, or you can also send them off to us if you're looking for help with your room. We're happy to help you analyze them and give you input on how to treat your room. Before we wrap this up, I wanna talk a little bit about what those measurements should look like and the expectation levels that you should have for your measurements. So to give you some context, the best studios in the world have a frequency response that falls around plus or minus three dB, and the best home studios have a frequency response that normally falls between plus or minus five dB, sometimes even a little bit higher. So there's gonna be a pretty wide gap from top to bottom in terms of your frequency response, and that's totally normal. Let's take a quick look at the measurements we took here in my office, and I'll show you a little bit more about that. So I'm gonna quickly hide our phase, mic cal, and sound card cal, so we don't need to be viewing those. And then we're gonna zoom in here a little bit on our measurements. So I'm gonna change these limits in the top right corner. I'm gonna drop this down to 100, and then pull this up to 50. And this is basically just gonna zoom in our measurements. And we can see here, the bottom level in my office is around 72 dB, and excluding this big peak here, the top level is right around 90 dB. So it's about in a plus or minus 9 dB range for my frequency response. That gives you 18 dB from top to bottom from our lowest level to our top. So that's quite a bit. And we will definitely would wanna see that smoothed out if we were treating the low end in here. For a room that doesn't have any low end absorption or any bass trapping in here, you should expect to see some pretty crazy uh, jumps from the bottom of your graph to the top of your graph, and that's totally normal. It just means this office has a lot of room for improvement if we were trying to turn it into a mixing room. In part two of our series on REW, we'll walk you through how to analyze your measurements and break down what's going on in your room. We'll take you through waterfall plots, frequency response graphs, impulse responses, decay times, and even the room simulator in REW. I hope this video was helpful and gives you a jump start on taking measurements in your room. If you liked it, please like and subscribe to our channel and we'll see you in the next one.